We are Sorted, a group of mates who have your back when it comes to all things food. From cooking battles to gadget reviews Man, it's not worth it. and cookbook challenges to a midweek meal packs app. Crack your eggs, bake. We uncover the tools that'll help us all cook and eat smarter. Join our community where everything we do starts with you. Hello everyone and welcome to another festive instalment of Pretentious Ingredients. Now today, Mike has played head elf and has bought a whole bunch of potentially pretentious Christmas ingredients and Barry and I are gonna jump in and out to try them, taste them, review them and see what we think. I'm feeling festive and I'm always pretentious, so I'm ready. <laughs> okay, Basil, lift the cloche. Merry Christmas. Whoa, lovely packaging. I have to acknowledge there's a 50p pence fixed to it. Absolutely correct. What I'm seeing here is a Fort of a Mason dark chocolate caviar. Caviar being the eggs of sturgeon, right? Ingredients? There's no fish. <laughs> There's no fish in that. So I think Fortnum and Mason are talking about caviar in terms of their structural properties, not their ingredient properties. Now, before you open that, this is the instructions from Fortnum and Mason themselves. To open the tin, simply take a 50 pence piece twist and pop the lid open. Thank you very much. I think what's the real shame here is a bit, oh there you go, it was easy, wasn't it? Caviar or sheep droppings? <laughs> I'm a little bit disappointed by that. I was expecting tiny little chocolate globules. Pun? We don't like. <laughs> That's a new festive word. That no, is no. festive globules. Oh dear. <laughs> While you tuck in, let me tell you about these. These are a very happy marriage of two of life's great gastronomic luxuries, chocolate and caviar. Crafted from Actacoa dark chocolate, Fortnum's dark chocolate caviar is high in naturally occurring cocoa flavonols. An exceptional blend of health supporting super nutrients that help maintain the elasticity of blood vessels. Oh, s Correct, but not for Christmas. Because they're really shiny, I thought it was going to have a crunchy outside. Turns out, it's just a, let me say again, a glob jaw of chocolate. It's a more solid truffle. Send a couple over here. And I'm going to be honest, I'm, I'm disappointed by not only the fact they're not small caviar pieces, also, I don't think they taste very good. Bon appétit. Yeah. I'm left underwhelmed. I, I don't think that's the best dark chocolate of what I would associate. I think it's probably more of a novelty. However, that is trying to deliver something that isn't chocolate to make you feel good. That's trying to deliver chocolate that's full of, full of all the good things. And it's a different job. Well, Baz. I mean, you've eaten them on their own and it doesn't feel like they wowed you, but what if we serve them in their natural caviar environment? What? So, it's pretentious ingredient. <laughs> it's caviar. We thought we'd knock you up a, oh my a delicious pancake topped with whipped cream and the chocolate caviar. See if we can change your mind when served as a canapé. That is a hell of a canapé. <laughs> it's a big one, isn't it? This seems ridiculous, but sure. Oh, he's full of Christmas joy oh, today, okay. isn't he? It's unreal. Presumably a sweetened cream. Yeah, I'm going to mark the flavour of chocolate, it's quite nice. I'd have said fun. If you wanted to tick the fun box, which you're so desperate to tick at the moment, then make it more it's like caviar. Christmas or anything. Make it, make it really, really tiny, really, really silly. Maybe <coughs> glob jaws of chocolate would be more joy. Maybe serve it on something silly for a laugh. No, no, that's not fun. It's a stocking filler and no more. And what would you speculate that price tag to be? I actually, 80 grams. Yeah. 80, gra 80 grams of chocolate. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised if that's a tenner. Add 95p to the price and you're bang on. £10.95 for the tin. Pretentious. Okay. I've decided. Grinch has spoken. Ben, please turn around and lift the cloth. My balls are bigger than yours. Unnecessary. Right. Unnecessary. <laughs> oh. What I'd like you to do, actually, is take the lid off without looking at what they are. Why don't you grab one, smell one, look at it, sniff it, then tell me what it tastes like. Like a copper, rose goldy kind of effect. Can't smell anything. Nope. Ooh, what, what are you getting? It's like a chocolatey shell. Well, it's not obvious then. But it's got a real chew in the middle. It's a little salty licorice chew with chocolate caramel. It's a cross between, here's another tight reference, <laughs> a galaxy bar 
that kind of chocolate and caramel. Yeah. With Dolly all sorts, which is the licorice all sorts, and it's the black licorice part of that. Combine those two, spray it in copper or rose gold, and they're lovely. Oh, but that's something what? I would mm -hmm. seamless. <laughs> <laughs> You're absolutely right. These are classic salt and caramel coated licorice by Lacrids by Bulo. Lacrids, Lacrids, classic medley of melty soft licorice, smooth dolce chocolate and crispy sea salt is the perfect sweet and savoury combination. Do you get that sweet, savoury taste? Does it work? For like Scandinavia and Iceland, it's a big flavour combination in the same way that licorice and coffee can be. It's really, really delicious. I love that. I feel like we need to try those. Please. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, that is delicious. It keeps evolving, doesn't it, as well? You really get salted caramel mm. coming I'm, through. I'm not a massive licorice fan, but that makes it a lot easier to enjoy. I think these would be beautiful to finish on top of some Christmas cupcakes or little things you've made, so you actually use them as a decoration, or Unlike the last one where the tin was its novelty and its presentation case, these I would tip out into a nice thing and put on a coffee table, but just out of reach of wherever you're sat because they're very Moorish and otherwise you would eat them all. You like them? I like them. Barry? I really like them. Barry likes them. They must be good. Let's guess price. See if we can change your mind. Okay, so we're looking at 300 grams, so three and a half times as much chocolate as yours, which would put it at about 30 or 40 quid on the equivalent. I'm going to halve that and say 15 pounds. Would you be willing to pay 15 pounds for those? I wouldn't think twice about buying a pot of those if it was maybe 12 quid. 15 pounds 95, does that change your mind? It's what I expected. And I don't think I would pick them up at that price because in my head, I'm not really sure about this combination of salted caramel and licorice. Having tried them, yes, I would. Sounds like a resounding success yeah. from others. So pretentious or not? I don't think they're pretentious because I'm not trying to be anything they're not. Not pretentious. The moral of the story is you can cover something in rose gold <laughs> and it not be pretentious. That is remarkable. Feels to me like a particular store in London needs some retribution from Barry Taylor, so please lift the cloche. Please. Get in there! It seems like you're very happy. Explain. Chocolate orange. The best chocolate flavour combination out there, bar none. Terry's chocolate orange. My favourite Christmas chocolate. Chocolate and orange shaped orange that you can get at Christmas. I love, I love getting the whole chocolate to myself and taking off segments. It's like, it's one of the only novelty shaped chocolate bars out there that actually taste delicious. These are chocolate dipped orange slices by Fortnum and Mason. Made in England, these candied treats are the classic combination of orange and chocolate. You've been talking about Baz. Each orange slice is dipped in rich dark chocolate to make a delicious after dinner confection. That is sensational. Oh! We're back in the game. I mean, they're a bit jammy in the middle. Right, give, give them over here, I want to see what a chef Well, as a flavour combination, bang on, I imagine. Cheers. When they've been candied, they haven't been completely dried out. So they've still got a nice chew and a bit of goo to them. Really hard to eat half orange, half chocolate. That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> it is that chocolate and orange combo, but the flavour is incredible on those. It's almost like a mini dessert. Is it a pre-dessert? Is it an apres dessert? If you had... A... Oh, now I sound pretentious. Feels like the only thing we can do now is ruin it for you by them being far too expensive. So would you like to take a guess in their price? Was that the entire contents of the box? Yes. I was gonna start about 10 pounds, but then 10 pounds for a slice of orange is ridiculous. So let's bring it back a little bit. Let's go for seven pounds. For the entire box? Yeah. Well, Barry, these sell for £18.50. Damn. Damn. I wouldn't pay £18 for these. I actually would be really interested in actually making these myself. Reckon you'll give that a go over the holidays? He won't. On that part, it is just one orange. 
a bag of sugar, and a half a bar of dark chocolate. I'd give that a go. No, stuff it. Watch my Instagram, I will give this a go. Oh, that's... Pretentious or not? No, they're not pretentious. They're expensive, but they're not pretentious. And would you mind please lifting the cloth? Can't wait. Oh no, I know what you're like. What? You love cheese? I love cheese. Mike doesn't, and as head elf, he's bought it. Which means it's novelty. What do you mean novelty? If you've bought it as a non-cheese lover, the chances are it's caught your eye for a different reason. This is far too early to be judging. I think you should taste that. <laughs> he's changed his tune, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have to. I, yeah. I do like cheese. Yeah, have a taste, mate. Then you're studying like a foreign object. What notes are you getting? <laughs> that, to me, tastes like chalky strawberry petty falou. What? Like a yogurt, like it's a fromage fray. It's yogurty, but super sweet, fruity. Cheesy. Well, yes. This is Wensleydale with raspberry and Prosecco from the Great British Cheese Company. A new, improved recipe. This cheese is a treat for anyone with a sweet tooth. Yeah, it's very sweet. Sweet cheese. Are you getting any of the Wensleydale? Am I getting Wensleydale? No. Is it more of a dry, crumbly cheesecake than it is a piece of cheese? It is more like a dessert than a piece of cheese, but it's not cheesecakey. Should we try something? I'm fascinated. Let's give Quite excited by this. Obviously, we couldn't possibly serve you any cheese without an anti-pasty board. Cheers. Wow, it smells like Ooh. fromage fray yeah. kids' yogurts. That's so true. Cheers. Fromage. Oh, wet is very crumbly. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing I've tasted. It tastes like a petit falou gone off. It's 84% Wensleydale. I don't hate it. <laughs> what? There's nothing wrong with Wensleydale, and I have had some Wensleydale with fruits, with cranberry, you can get it with apricot. It, that's a classic way of serving Wensleydale. It doesn't taste anything like Prosecco at all. I can't, it's, it's not fizzy. It's got 0.5%, so it's one gram of Prosecco in that. So no, you can't taste it. I mean, also, I picked up a bit of their sticky toffee cheddar as well. Oh, <laughs> what? <laughs> sticky toffee, right. It's better than that. Really? But I think that's because it's a cheddar. So you've actually got a bit of a tang from quite a mature cheddar with that fruit. What about the spiced piri piri cheddar? It's got a warmth of chilli. It's not a blow your head off, but it's quite warm. But it's warm enough to go, the cheese is irrelevant. I'm just getting chilli. Food is so subjective, because I'm, I'm just confused by why anyone would want to put chilli with something so wonderful as cheese. And yet, yeah, it works the world over and some people love it. And like a Montreal Jack or something like that, jalapeno, it's a, it's a firm favourite, it's just not for me. Cheers. The Peri Peri, as a non-cheese liker, tastes a bit cheesy, very spicy, and I quite like it. Too strong for a cheese board. Too sweet for a cheese board, but perhaps could be whipped into a dessert. Silly novelty for Christmas, but I'm actually not against silly novelty at Christmas. I'd put that but in the same bracket as chocolate caviar. Which we talk, honey? These are all the same price. How much do you think for a wheel? I have bought a similar size wheel of waxed cheddar flavoured from other cheese companies. And I think I remember paying £4.50 a wheel. He's confident in the price, isn't he? He's very close. They are £5 each. Question is, pretentious or not? Not pretentious. Because I think if you're buying a raspberry and prosecco Wednesday though, you know what you're buying. So it's doing the job. I, did. I just don't think it's very premium. And I wouldn't go there. Now it's over to you guys. Do you agree with us or not? Are these pretentious or not? Comment below and let us know. And if you've seen any potentially pretentious ingredients that you'd like us to have a look at and review, then tweet us at Sorted Food, hashtag Sorted pretentious. <laughs> Have you ever got to the end of a long day with no ideas, ingredients, or energy to cook? Takeaway? Hmm, it'll be the fourth this week. Well, that's why we built our revolutionary Meal Packs app. 
Thousands of people are using it to shop, cook and eat a whole lot better and easier while saving money as a result. You can go and use it in its entirety for free for a whole month and see if it's for you. The link is in the description box below. And now for the blooper. Do you want to talk? Okay. No, I just meant about your problems, whatever oh. you're going through right now. No, honestly, <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine. That just rolled me up the wrong way. <laughs>